as clinicians, you work hard every day to keep your patients safe. That's a given. You can also play an important role in protecting your patients from harmful supplements, especially for people living with or at risk of eating disorders. The first step is to begin open, informed conversations with your patients about their supplement use. A 2008 article published in the American Journal of Medicine suggests a six-step process for speaking with patients about their use of dietary supplements. One, ask about supplement use and the reason for using it. Patients usually will not offer information about supplement use unless they are asked. Some clinicians feel uncomfortable asking about supplements because they haven't been given much information about them. It's important to be clear with patients about what you know, why this conversation is important, and how you can help them to make informed decisions around supplement use. The beginning of that conversation might go something like this. And do you smoke cigarettes or use any tobacco products? No. How about dietary supplements? Things like vitamins, creatine, melatonin? Yeah, I take vitamins sometimes, just those normal once daily ones. Okay, anything else? Some people take supplements for weight loss, muscle building, or mood, anything like that? Yeah, I just started these green tea pills to lose weight. I'm trying to lose 15 pounds before my friend's wedding in June. Do you know the name of the product or the brand? Um, I can't remember right now. My mom takes them too. I can ask her. I'll text her. Okay, while you get that information, I'm happy to help you do some research to see if it's something you want to continue. I get concerned when my patients take certain supplements because sometimes they can cause serious side effects that patients are not mm -hmm. aware of. Have you noticed a difference in how it makes you feel? Yeah, I've been sweating kind of a lot lately, but I took an extra pill this morning, so maybe that's why. Okay. How about I check your blood pressure while we wait for your mother to get back to you? Okay. Two, take patient disclosure of supplement use seriously, just like you would for prescription drugs. Seek out available resources if you're unfamiliar with a supplement. Some resources mentioned in the American Journal of Medicine article are found in this table. Three, tell your patients how supplements are regulated. What do you know about how supplements are regulated? What do you mean? So you know over-the-counter drugs like ibuprofen are regulated by a federal agency called the FDA. What people don't know is that supplements are not pre-screened for safety and effectiveness the way that over-the-counter drugs are. Oh. So there's just no one looking at what's in them then? Well, they, they work mostly on a complaint-based system. So it's not often until there's an outbreak of serious side effects from certain supplements that the FDA steps in. Things like stroke, damage to the liver, or even death. And it's way too late to keep consumers safe. Yeah, wow, I had no clue. Yeah, I'd really appreciate it if you can help me look into that supplement then. I think my mom just texted me back, actually. Four, continue researching clinical trials or studies that have tested the safety and efficacy of the supplements your patient is taking or asking about. Learn about side effects and drug interactions. Along with the resources I mentioned earlier, you might consider looking through medical databases like Medline or Sinal, or maybe consulting a hospital or community pharmacist. Then, discuss what you find with your patient so that they can make an informed decision. Five, compare the risks and benefits of supplement use to available conventional therapies that you would offer instead. Share your newfound knowledge with your patient as well and let your patient know that you're open to continuing the conversation. And lastly, six, if your patient decides to use the supplement, monitor them for any adverse events and be sure to report any adverse effects to the FDA. You can do so through the FDA Safety Reporting Portal at safetyreporting.hhs.gov. Also, keep in mind the role that supplements for weight loss and muscle building can play in the development and exacerbation of eating disorders. 
This can help you to detect warning signs of eating disorders and make referrals in a timely way so patients get the care they need. In closing, a problem of this magnitude and severity requires an all-hands-on-deck approach. Together as doctors, nurses, social workers, dietitians, researchers, and public health practitioners, we must step up to help those we work with to make safer and more informed decisions around the use of dietary supplements. Through our efforts, we can help others to avoid the tragic and all too common health consequences that we've talked about today.